This video is showing some initial measurements I did on the uh, Phoenix uh, 6112 uh, receiver proof of concept board. So what I've done, I've got the power supply uh, in place, which is uh, the LM7805 and the uh, bypass capacitors. Power supply is coming in here, feeding 12 volts. And then I've got the uh, second SA612 which is going to be feeding uh, the audio output. So all I've, done, all I've done here is I've configured it with the power coming in and some bypass capacitors. I've got the BFO signal coming in here and it's got the decoupling capacitor and as well it's supposed to have a pot. I just put a capacitor across the pot and uh, then here's the input that's coming in. Normally there would be a transformer here but I'm just feeding the input directly here um, into the input of the SA612 and likewise the BFO is coming in into the uh, the LO port of the uh, uh, SA612 and then the output port is going through a uh, bypass cap and uh, or a, a decoupling cap and this is connected to my uh, SA. So this is connected to my SIGGEN. This is connected to my SIGGEN. And I'm going to feed in some signals. I've got a couple of SA612s I'm going to insert. And we'll see uh, how this performs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power up the board. I'm going to check the voltage to this pin here of the uh, SA612. That's connected to my... Uh, voltmeter here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power it up. So I'm feeding 12.6 uh, 12, uh, 12 volts into the input. Uh, my LED is on saying it's on and my voltage I'm measuring here at the SA612 is 4.89 volts. So on my uh, SIGGEN on channel 1 which is coming out here channel 1 and it's connected to a 20 dB attenuator. I'm running that at uh, 12 megahertz and minus 30 dBm. So channel 1 is connected to the input here. So I'm feeding in a minus 50 dBm signal into the input of the SA612. And uh, for the BFOLO connection, I'm feeding uh, 15.75 megahertz at minus 10 dBm. There is no attenuator in line here and that's being fed into the local oscillator port of the uh, SA612. So the configuration I have on my spectrum analyzer is I've got a 10 dB attenuator that's uh, connected to it. I'm doing a sweep from 0 to 16 megahertz and I've got uh, 20 dB of attenuation dialed in and my bandwidth is set to 3 kilohertz. And I'm also going to turn on continuous uh, peak uh, detect so I'm going to have my peak table on so it'll automatically tell me what my peaks are. So I've got the first uh, SA612 plugged in. I'm going to power it up so it's powered up, I got voltage, and then I'm going to turn on my two inputs. And on the spectrum analyzer, that's what I'm seeing. So here is the uh, BFO, the local oscillator BFO signal, which is the 15.75 megahertz. And it's coming in about minus 65 uh, dBm or so. Uh, the th peak number three is the actual mixed out output signal, the diff difference between the RF and uh, uh, LO signal and it's 3.75 and it's minus 65 dBm. So I'm going to record that and we'll move on to the next uh, SA612 chip. So the second SA612 uh, chip is plugged in. I'm going to power it on. The LED comes on and I'm going to enable my inputs and uh, this is what the spectrum analyzer is seeing. So the uh, 15 megahertz, 15.75 uh, megahertz uh, LO is at minus 54 
dBm and the 3.75 mix signal is at minus uh, 69, 68 minus 69 uh, dBm. And of course that's with a uh, 10 dB attenuator in line. And now for my third SA612, it's plugged in. It's powered up. I enable my outputs or my inputs into the chip. And here's what my spectrum analyzer is seeing. So on this chip, the uh, the RF that the uh, the LO is much much higher. See, so it's seeing it as minus 35 dBm. It's also seeing the uh, RF input coming in at minus 65 dBm. And uh, peak number four, which is the mix signal, it's down around minus 73. Minus 74 dBm. Here's a summary of the results uh, I just uh, did on the various SA612s for chip number 1, 2, and number 3. I'm feeding in a 12 megahertz signal into the RF port at minus 30 dBm. There's a 20 dB attenuator, attenuator in line, so this is actual minus 50 dBm that's being fed in. For the LO port, I'm feeding in 15.375 MHz at minus 10 dBm, and there's no attenuator. So my SA61, my SA, my spectrum analyzer is has a 10 dB attenuator in line, and here's the various values it's seeing. So on chip number one, the mix signal, the difference between the 12 and the 15.375 uh, for chip number one is minus 66 minus 68 and minus 74 so chip number three is definitely a much much lower than the other chips as well the uh, RF in is actually showing up on chip number three and uh, the LO signal is quite strong it's about 30 dB stronger than these other uh, chips so by far chip number one seems to be giving me the best performance for this next test, I plugged in my first SA612, which is giving me the best performance. It's powered up, and in this case, I'm going to be putting in a 12 uh, megahertz uh, RF at minus 30 dBm with the 10, 20 dB, that's minus 50. But with the uh, BFO now, uh, I'm feeding in 12.002 megahertz, so that's got a difference of 2 kilohertz and that's being fed in at minus 10 uh, dBm so the spectrum analyzer should be showing plus and minus frequency so the difference will be a 2 kilohertz uh, signal so here's the configuration of the uh, spectrum analyzer again a 10 uh, dB attenuator in line my frequency goes from 0 to 3 kilohertz and even though the bandwidth of this, the 3 kilohertz is well below because the bandwidth is at 9 kilohertz. So I know my 3 kilohertz uh, signal or, or my 2 kilohertz signal is going to be attenuated because it's outside of the uh, bandpass filter of this uh, device. So in terms of uh, the bandwidth I've set up, my resolution bandwidth is at 30 hertz, but my uh, video... Uh, resolution set to one kilohertz so it's doing a, an average it's uh, it's getting an average so my amplitude I've got my attenuator set to 5 dB before it was set to minus uh, to 20 dB now it's down to 5 uh, dB attenuation so that's a total of 15 dB attenuation coming into the unit which is not a good idea to be running 15 dB of attenuation but I'm only feeding in an audio signal and the other RF signal is very weak so uh, shouldn't be a problem I'll now turn on the signals and there's my peak there at uh, 2 kilohertz it's coming up it's seeing it at minus uh, 77 dBm and again that number cannot be trusted because I'm outside of the bandwidth of this device and if I was to go into my trace and do an average it'll take the 
this floor here, smooth it right out, and I get a much more accurate reading because it's taken a hundred uh, samples and averaging it. So I'm seeing minus 77 dBm. So clearly you could see the two kilohertz peak there, which is the difference between the RF in of 12 megahertz and the BFO frequency of uh, 12.002 megahertz. So in conclusion, I've done two tests here. One test I did just to check the mixer. I put in two signals and I got the appropriate signals out. I did it with three SA612s and you could see there was at least one SA612 that was having a bad day. It's not working very well. And finally I fed in a, um, a RF and uh, um, a signal that was off by two uh, kilohertz and sure enough I would pick it up on the spectrum analyzer. So at that point I'd like to end this video here. Thanks for watching.